Hello everyone, welcome to Matrix YouTube channel. Today we are here to discuss the solutions of Matrix Olympiad paper which was held on 22 October. So we will start from class 7th and the subject is physics. Let us start our discussion. Our first question. So as we can see in first question it is said the displacement of a car is directly proportional to the square of time taken. Let us said, let us assume the displacement is taken as x which is directly proportional to the square of time during the motion. Which of the following is the correct graph to represent the motion of car? So here we can see we have four options. In four options in y axis the velocity is taken and on x axis time is taken. So we have to convert this distance into velocity. So whenever a proportionality sign is removed a constant came into role. Let us assume a constant k. So it becomes displacement equal to kt square. Now dividing both sides by time. So from this t the power of t square is cancelled and x upon t is known as velocity which becomes equal to kt. So from here we can see velocity becomes directly proportional to time and whenever two quantities are proportional to each other the graph is straight line coming from origin. So our correct answer is option A. Next question, question number two. In question number two, it is said the odometer of bus reads 6700 kilometer when it start from a station at 9 am. Time is given and the odometer reading is given here. And when it comes back to station at 10 pm, that means total time interval is from morning 9 o'clock to night 10 pm which becomes equal to 13 hours, okay? And the odometer reading is found to be 6960 kilometers. That means the total uh, distance traveled is, let's say x equal to, that is given by 6960 minus 6700, which becomes equal to 260 kilometer, okay? This distance is traveled. So it is asked, then the average speed of the bus in the whole journey is we know that average speed is given by total distance traveled divided by total time. So we can see here total distance traveled is 260 kilometer and total time is 13 hour. So by solving this simply we will get the answer 20 kilometer per hour. So correct answer is option B. Okay. Next question, question number three. In question number three, it is said wooden, uh, sorry, woolen cloths keep us warm during winter because during winters we wear woolen cloths and it keep us warm because wool is poor conductor of heat. That is a true statement because whenever heat is trapped in it, it does not allow it to go easily. Okay, wool is a good conductor of heat. No, this is a wrong statement. Air trapped in between the fibers prevent the heat flow. Yes, this is also true. So our correct option is D, both A and C. Next question, question number four. In question number four, we have to check which of the following statement are true and which are false. So let us start from the statement first. Radiation is the fastest mode of heat transfer. This is a true statement and we know that the light coming from sun is in the form of radiation. So it is a true statement. Let's T. Motion is the combined property of the object under study and the observer. Yes, it is a relative study. So, this is also a true statement. Conduction and convection requires a material medium for heat transfer. Yes, this mode of heat transfer requires medium and this is also uh, uh, occur in solid and fluids. So, this is a true statement also. So, all the three statements are true. So, our correct answer code will be option B. True, true and true. Next question, question number 5. In question number 5, we have to match the following column 1 with column 2. Evaporation, as we know that evaporation is the process in which liquid is converted into gas. So for P, we will write 2. Sublimation, we know that the conversion or change in the state of matter when any solid is directly converted into gas. So for sublimation, I will write 3. Condensation, that means when uh, any gas is uh, converted to liquid, then it is called condensation 
So for R, it is one. So correct code answer will be two three one. Let us check two three one. That is option A is our correct answer. Okay. Next question, question number six. Question number six. Heat stops flowing from one body to another body when the both bodies attain equal temperature. That is a very simple question. We know that heat flow from higher temperature to lower temperature till both the bodies or body and its surrounding attain. Equal temperature. So, correct answer is option C. Next question number seven. In question number seven, it is said an ant moves on a rectangular path shown in figure. So, in this rectangular path, this distance is eight centimeter and this DC is four centimeter. It is start from A and moves with uniform speed of zero point zero one meter per second. That means ant is moving with uniform speed. It doesn't not. It does not changing it its speed. So for this, we have to check the average speed of the ant after one hour will be. As it is said in question, ant is moving with uniform speed. So the average speed will be same, and the correct answer will be option C. So we have discussed all the solutions. For more information regarding Matrix Olympiad, like result and prizes, please subscribe this channel. Thank you very much. Hello everyone. Now we will discuss the chemistry portion of class seventh. Let's see the question. Silk is mainly composed of a protein called. Option A is cellulose. Option B is lysine. Option C is collagen. And option D is fibroin. So option D is a right option. Fibroin. Fibroin is a protein which is secreted by the silk worm and which is exactly named as Bombex mori. So the option D is a right option for the question eight. Now let's see the next question. Now let's see the next question. Cashmere wool is obtained from option A is Angora rabbit, option B is merino wool sheep, option C is Pashmina got and option D is Kohi camel. So option C is the right option for this question. Exactly, Pashmina got from the cashmere wool and which is very soft and warm wool. Look, let's see the next question. Cow fiber is extracted from the husk of which fruit? Option A is coconut. Option B is banana. Option C is pineapple, and option D is mango. Option A is the right option, coconut. Exactly from the mesocarp part of the coconut, we can obtain core fiber, and this core fibers, these fibers are used in the foot mats, brushes, and for making all these type of the door mats. So option A is the right option for this question. Now let's see the next question. Question number eleven. Which of the following statement is or are true or false? Let's see the first option. Tooth decay is caused due to the presence of bees. It is completely a wrong statement because tooth decay is caused due to the presence of an acid, not a base. So the option first is a false statement. Now let's see the second option. Phenolphthalein gives pink color in basic solution. Yes, this is a true solution because phenolphthalein is a colorless indicator, which when we dissolve acid in the phenolphthalein, then it is still colorless or retained colorless. When but when we dissolve basic solution in the phenolphthalein, then it gives pink color because. The ions of the OH negative, or we can see the ions of the basic solution, impart the ions which release the color. So the option second is a true statement. Nitric acid is an inorganic acid. This is also a true statement. There are the two types of the acids: organic acid and inorganic acids. Organic acids are generally obtained from the natural sources, and these type of acids like sulfuric acid, nitric acid, that are generally synthetic. We can say that uh, synthetic acids, or we can say that that are man-made acids. So that are inorganic acids. So the false, true, and true. So the option D is the 
right option for this question. Now, let's see the next question. Match column first with column second and select the correct answer using the codes given below. First is sulfuric acid, second is ammonium hydroxide and third is acetic acid. And here the, in the column second, weak base, strong acid and weak base means in the column acid, column sorry. So in the column first, there are different compounds or we can say there are different acids and bases and in the column second, there are different natures of the acids and bases. So let's see the option P, sulfuric acid. We know that sulfuric acid is a strong acid which release H positive ion very easily. So the sulfuric acid match with the option second, strong acid. Ammonium hydroxide, sulfuric acid is H2SO4. It releases H positive ion very easily. So because of that, it's a, a strong acid. So next is the ammonium hydroxide. Ammonium hydroxide is NH4OH. Ammonium hydroxide is a weak base. So ammonium hydroxide option Q match with option first. And last is acetic acid. Acetic acid, the formula of the acetic acid is CH3COOH. Acetic acid is an organic acid which is generally present in the vinegar. So the R match with the third. So Q match with second. Oh, sorry, P match with. So P match with second. Q match with first option. And R match with third option. So 2, 1, 3. So option A is the right option. Yes. Now, let's see the question number 13. The sting of an ant contains formic acid which causes pain and inflammation. To get relief from ant sting, the acid is neutralized by basic solution like sodium bicarbonate or zinc carbonate calamyl solution. So, let's see the question. Which of the following substance is used to treatment of ant sting? Option A is baking soda. Option B is sodium chloride, option C is sulfuric acid and option D is carbonic acid. Carbonic acid is an acid. So, we know that, that in the ant sting there is an acid. So, acid, on acid, acid does not react. So, option D is a wrong option. Sodium chloride is also not a right option for this question. Sulfuric acid is also an acid. So, let's see the a option, baking soda. Baking soda is formed by the NaHCO3. And we can see that, that the sodium bicarbonate is also known as the baking soda. So the option A is the right option. Hello student, welcome to Matrix High School. Today we discuss about Matrix Olympiad paper solution for class 7th. For class 7th, biology portion in size. Now start. Question number first. Which of the following system is responsible for producing enzymes that add in breakdown of substances that are be absorbed for the body's growth and repair? Body's growth and repair. Growth and repair. So, uh, system and enzyme. Respiratory system that not release an any enzyme. Digestive system is the right answer according to question that release so many enzymes for uh, breakdown of substances and responsible for body growth and repair. So right answer is option B. Next, which body part of an elephant are modified uh, from form of teeth, modified form of teeth, legs, no, trunk, no, tusk, tusk is the right answer that are modified form of teeth. Next, the process by which green plant prepare their own food is known as, prepare their own food, mean autotrophs. Autotroph process is called photosynthesis. So, right answer is photosynthesis. Transpiration, wrong. Respiration, wrong. Right answer is photosynthesis. Photo mean 
प्रेजेंस ऑफ लाइट लाइट सिंथेसिस मीन फॉर्मेशन ऑफ फूड तो इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ लाइट फॉर्मेशन ऑफ फूड दैट इज फोटोसिंथेसिस राइट आंसर इज ऑप्शन बी फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन नेक्स्ट विच स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट अबाउट द विले विले इज अ स्ट्रक्चर दैट प्रेजेंट एट स्मॉल इंटरसाइन इट इज uh it increase the surface area for absorption of food that is right it decrease the surface area that is wrong it protect the lining of small intestine wrong it protect the lining of stomach wrong so right option is first that increase the surface area for absorption of food willy small finger like projections present at the surface of small intestine next question which of the following statements true and false true and false breakdown of complex substance complex substance into simpler substance is not a peristalsis movement peristalsis movement no so that option is right breakdown of complex food into simple is not peristalsis so this is right next the process of passing of digested food into blood vessels into blood vessels in the intestine is called peristalsis no that is wrong mean false statement the process of utilization of glucose amino acid is called peristalsis movement no that is wrong peristalsis movement that is in esophagus food transfer from buccal cavity to stomach so it is a movement of food movement of food into the stomach so first option is uh, right but this movement is not involved in this case so according to statements our right option is true false false true false false option a is the right answer for this question next match the column first and second rajasthan rajasthan polar region tropical rain forest and option uh, column second hot humid hot dry and coldest so polar region is coldest region that is right now rajasthan rajasthan hot and dry and next tropical rain forest is hot and humid so according to column our right option is 2 3 1 2 3 1 in option a option a is the right answer for this question next a ruminant rumen rumen present in cow a ruminant is any herbivores herbivores depend on grasses product of producer animal that has a stomach with four compartment rumen reticulum omasum and abomasum so uh, carefully observe the picture picture is for ruminant below and answer the following question green grass in the figure show that digestive system of grass eating animal green grass presents so uh, picture is for ruminant so p the part p shown in figure is p p is for rumen next this one is uh, reticulum this one is omasum next uh, abomasum so according to question p p is option a rumen rumen is the right answer these are the solution for biology portion for class 7 thank you one continuing the solution of matrix olympiad paper for class 7 i am here to discuss the fourth part of the paper that is of mathematics so let's begin with the solutions here question number 21 is one 
autumn morning the temperature rose from minus 2 degree celsius to 4 degree celsius by how many degrees did the temperature rises so we have to find out the difference between these two temperature so let's find out here present temperature is 4 degree celsius and initial temperature is minus 2 degree celsius so we have to find out the difference here so here 4 minus minus is plus 2. So the answer is 6 degree Celsius. So here option B is the correct answer. Now let's solve the next question number 22. Now here we have to solve this fraction. And the fraction is 0 0.02 upon 0 0.002. We can write it like this also. 2 multiplied by 1000 upon 2 multiplied by 100 plus 0 0.02 upon 2 written as 2 upon 100 multiplied by 2. Here let's cancel out. Here we get 10 plus 1 upon 100 and here 1 upon 100 can be written as 0 0.01. So, 10 plus 0, 1 is 10.01. Here, option C is the correct answer. Now, let's solve the next question. That is question number 23. In 23rd question, we have to simplify. Let's convert this mixed fraction into the pro improper fraction. So, here first we get 37 upon 12 minus... So, here the answer is 0. So, option D is the correct answer. Now, the next question is question number 24. If M is equal to 9 and N is equal to 33 upon 5 multiplied by 15 upon 11, then find the value of M upon N. So, here let's find out the value of N first. 33 upon 5 multiplied by 15 upon 11. 3. Here 3. So the value of n is 3 multiplied by 3 that is equal to 9. So m upon n is equal to 9 upon 9 that is 1. So value of m upon n is 1 that is option A. So the correct answer is A. Now the next number is question number 25. Convert the decimal number 56.432 into a fraction. Now let's convert this decimal into fraction. 56432 upon 1000. So let's simplify it. So here we get 7054 upon 125. So after converting 56.432 into fraction, we get 7054 upon 125. So here option C is the correct answer. Now the next question is question number 26. The average monthly income of a four members of the family is rupees 610. 
After marriage of one girl, the average income of the family becomes rupees six hundred fifty point seven five. Then the salary of the married girl is. We have to find out the salary of the married girl. So here, the required income is income is equal to n p plus b. So here, n is the total number of members in the family. So here we have total number of member that is four. What is a here? A is the initial average of the income. That is six hundred ten point two five. Now what is b? Last average. That is six hundred fifty point seven five. Now we are going to put the values in the formula. That is four. A is six hundred ten point two five. Now from this we will going to get the salary of the married girl. So now let's calculate it. Here after calculation we get four hundred eighty eight seven five. So our answer is option B. That is four hundred eighty eight point seven five. Now the next question is twenty seven. The average of three numbers is seventy. Seven. The first number is twice the second. The second number is twice the third. The first number is we have to find out the first number. So here let's take the third number B X. Let's write it down. Let the third number be X. Then. Second number is equal to second number is twice the third. Twice the third means two x. Then we talk about the first number. First number is twice the second. So twice the second means two multiply by two x. That is equal to four x. Now according to question, let Take the average of these three numbers. So the average of three number is equal to sum of all observations upon total number of observations upon total number of observations. So here average is given to us seventy seven. Sum will be. Four x plus two x plus x upon three. So three multiplied by seventy seven is two hundred thirty one. That is equal to seven x. So here the value of x is equal to thirty three. Now putting the value in the first number. So first number is four x. Four multiplied by thirty three is equal to one hundred thirty two. So the first number is one hundred thirty two. Here the option D is the correct answer. Now the next question is question number twenty-eight. Mr. Sharma is three times as old as his daughter. After five years, the sum of their ages will be sixty-two years. Find the present age of his daughter. So we have to find out the present age of the daughter. So let's take the age of daughter equal to 
as so here the age of mr sharma cricket after 5 year means we have to add 5 years to their ages so let's add 5 now the sum of their ages will be 62 so let's write down in the equation form x plus 5 plus 3x plus 5 equal to 62 let's solve it 4x plus 10 equal to 62 4x equal to 52 x equal to 52 divided by 4 So x is equal to thirteen. Therefore, we can say that age of daughter is thirteen years. Here, option C is the correct answer. Now, next question, question number twenty. The following steps involved in finding the positive value of x from the equation x square equal to twenty three point zero four. So here they are given with the x square. That is equal to twenty three point zero four. Arrange the following steps in sequential order. So we have to find out what is the value of x, and we are given with the four steps. We have to simply arrange this four step and find out the final answer. Now here we are given with x square that is equal to twenty three point zero four. The first step will be x square equal to twenty three point zero four is equal to three zero four divided by hundred. So in the first step, we are going to convert this decimal number into fraction number. So here the first step we have found. Now the second step will be. This x square is equal to forty-eight square upon square of ten. After that, the third step will be this: x is equal to forty-eight upon ten, and the last one is four point eight. So here we got our. So here the sequence will be three, one, four. Two. So we here we have three one four two. C is the correct answer. Now let's solve the next question. Question number thirty. The statement form of the equation b upon five minus three is equal to zero is given by. So here we have to find out the statement. Now. First option is taking away five from three times a number b gives zero. So taking away five means we have to take away five and minus five. So in this equation, it is minus three, not five. So first equation, first the statement is not correct. Second, taking away three from one fifth, three from one fifth of a number gives zero. Yes, statement two is correct. Third is Five times a number b is three, so here it is not five times. So this statement is also incorrect. And the last is sum of one fifth. It is not sum because we have sign of subtraction here. So here we are not having any kind of addition. So here third d option is incorrect. So here, out of these four options, we are having option B, the correct answer. Taking away three from one fifth number B gives zero. Now the next question is question number thirty-one. So here, let's solve the equation: two x minus three multiplied by ten equal to three multiplied by five x minus twelve. So here we get. Twenty-eight. So 
So here we get the value of x minus 6 upon 5. So according to option, we can say that option A is the correct answer. Now let's solve the next question, question number 32. Question number 32 is in the given figure not drawn to scale DAE, here is DAE, CBH, CBH, A, C, A, C, G are straight lines. So we are having three straight lines and DE parallel to CH, DE parallel to CH, parallel to F, G. So here it is F, G. Now we have to find out the value of X and Y respectively. So to find out the value of Y, let's recall the concept of parallel lines. So here F, G is parallel to D, E. Now A, G is transversal. So here 70 and X. The sum of these two angles are 180 degree because of co-interior angle. So here the value of x is 180 minus 70 that is 110. So here we have 110 the value of x. The same concept will be applicable in finding out the value of y also because here CH is parallel to AE and here BA is transversal. So 35 and Y, these two angles are forming a co-interior angle. So here Y plus 35 degree is equal to 180. So value of Y is equal to 180 minus 35 that is equal to 100, 100. 45. So here option B is the correct answer. Now let's solve the next question that is question number 33. In the following figure if AB is parallel to CD then find the value of X. So here we have to find the value of X. Now for the construction part we can say that we are drawing a straight line parallel to AB and CD. So let's draw a straight line, let it be L, parallel to AB and CD. Now, with the help of this straight line, you can say that angle D is equal to angle O here. Let it be angle 1 and this be angle 2. So here, angle D means angle means 20 degree is equal to angle 1 because they both are alternate interior angle. So here angle 1 is equal to 20 degree. In the same way line AB is parallel to line L. Here angle 2 is equal to angle B that is 30 degree because this is a alternate interior angle. Here the value of X is equal to 30 plus 20 that is equal to 50 degree. So here value of x is 30 degree. Option D is the correct answer. Now the next question is question number 34. A number is multiplied by 6 and 12 is added to the product. Then the result is 84. What is the original number? So here we have to find out the original number. So Let's take the number BX. Let the number be X. So according to question, a number is multiplied by 6. It means 6X and 12 is added to the product. And we are going to add 12 to the product. Then the result is 84 equal to 84. Now we have to solve this equation. 6x is equal to 84 minus 12. 6x is equal to 72. x is equal to 72 upon 6. After cancellation we get 12. So here the value of x or we can say that the original number is 12. So here option c is the correct answer. 
Now the next question is question number 35. In the following figure, if line L is parallel to M, here is line L is parallel to M, AB is parallel to CD, AB is parallel to CD, BC is parallel to DE, here BC is parallel to DE, then choose the incorrect option. We have to choose the incorrect option here. So let's find out. Angle 1 is equal to angle 3. So here angle 1 is equal to angle 3. CD. So here angle 1 is equal to angle 2. And if we talk about BC. Here. We can write it like this. When line AB is parallel to. CD then angle 1 is equal to angle 2 because they both are alternate interior angles and the next one is when BC is parallel to DE then angle 2 is equal to angle 3 because they both are alternate interior angles. So with these two equations, we can say that angle 1 is equal to angle 3. So option A is correct. Now option B, angle 2 plus angle 5 plus angle 6 is equal to 180 degree. Angle 2 plus 5 plus 6 is 180. So option B is correct. The sum of these three angles is 180 degree as M is a straight line. Now option D. Angle 8 is equal to angle 6. Here it is angle A and this is angle 6. So these two are also alternate interior angles because BC is parallel to DE. So this statement is also correct. Now the last one is angle 1 plus angle 4 plus angle 5 is equal to 360 degree. So this statement is incorrect because sum of three angles means angle 1 plus angle 4 plus angle 5. The sum of three angle is equal to 180 degree. So option D is the correct answer for the given question. Now let's solve the next question. Question number 36. In this question we have to find out the value of x. So here an isosceles triangle is given to us in triangle ABC angle ABC is equal to angle ACB because in an isosceles triangle base angle are same and if we talk about small triangle that is triangle BDC. Angle DBC is equal to angle DCB that is 32 degree. So angle DCB is also 32 degree. Now in triangle ABC angle B is 32 plus X. This is also so here so here angle sum property we are going to use 32 plus x plus 32 plus x plus 64 is equal to 180 degree so here 64 plus 2x plus 64 equal to 180. So here the value of x is 26 degree. Option B is the correct answer. Now the next question is question number 37. In this question, uh, figure is given to us. If ABCE, ABCE is a parallelogram and BCD is a straight line. So to find the value of x, we are going to take the help of this triangle that is isosceles triangle and this first we are going to find out the value of these two angles 
let's say y. So here using angle sum property we are finding out the value of these angles. So 2y is equal to 180 minus 38. So here the angle is 71 degree. Now we know that in parallelogram AB and EC lines are parallel to each other. So BC is a transversal here angle X and this angle Y is corresponding angle. So if the value of angle Y is 71 then the value of angle X is also 71 because angle Y is equal to X. They both are corresponding angles. So here option A is the correct answer. Now the next question is question number 38. In the given figure AB perpendicular to BC, BD perpendicular to AC and CE bisect angle A. So here CE bisect angle A. If angle A is equal to 30 degree, then what is the measure of CED? So we have to find out this angle. So to find out the angle CED, first we have to take the help of this big triangle. So here in triangle ABC, angle A is given to us, that is 30 degree. Angle B is given to us, that is 90 degree. And angle C is unknown to us. So using angle sum property, we can find it out. 30 plus 90 plus angle C is equal to 180 degree. Here angle C is equal to 180 degree minus 120 degree. Therefore angle C is equal to 60 degree. So this whole angle is equal to 60 degree. But here CE bisect angle C. So here 60 degrees divided into two parts that is 30 degree and 30 degree. Now we have to find out angle C E D. So in triangle C E D angle C D E is equal to 90 degree. This angle is 90 degree. Next is angle C E D is unknown to us and angle D C E is equal to 30 degree. So using some property we get 90 plus 30 plus angle C E D is equal to 180 degree. Angle C E D is equal to 180 minus 120 that is equal to 60 degree. So here option B is the correct answer as this is 60 degree. Now the next question is question number 39. In this question we have to find out the value of x. So here the angle x. Now in the figure angle A, B is given to us A, B, C is 60 degree. So this angle is given to us. 60 degree. Now we will going to find out first angle G. We know that it is a complete angle. So 90 degree plus 140 degree plus angle G is equal to 360 degree. Here angle G is 130 degree. Now in a triangle BGC In triangle B, G, C, we are using angle sum property. Angle G is 130 
then plus 30 plus equal G B C is equal to 180 degree. Uh, we get angle G B C equal to 180 degree minus 160. Now after subtracting 180 minus 160 we get 20 degree. So here this is small angle is 20 degree. Now we know that angle E B C is 60 degree and the small part of this angle is 20 degree. So the remaining part will be 60 minus 20 that is 40 degree. So we get 90 plus 40 plus x. So here in this triangle 40 degree plus 90 degree plus x is equal to 180 degree. So here we get 130 degree plus x is equal to 180 degree. So x is equal to 180 minus 130 that is equal to 50 degree. So the value of x is 50 degree. So here option A is the correct answer. Now the next question is question number 40. In this given figure is there and ABC is a triangle. Here ABC is a triangle in which BC is produced to D. Angle A ratio, angle B ratio, angle C is equal to 3 ratio 2 ratio 1 and AB perpendicular and AC perpendicular to CE. Here AC is perpendicular to CE. Then angle ECD is angle ECD. It means we have to find out this angle. So to find out this angle, we have to first find out this triangle as ratio is given to us. So here angle A ratio, angle B ratio, angle C is equal to 3 ratio 2 ratio 1. So let the angle be x and these ratio will be 3x, 2x and 1x. So here let's add 3x plus 2x plus 1x equal to 180 degree according to angle sum property of a triangle. We don't know the angle so we are taking the angle x. So this is 3 times x, 2 times x and 1 times x. So here 6x is equal to 180. The value of x is equal to 180 upon 6 that is 30 degree. So here angle A is 30 multiplied by 3 is 90 degree. Here the angle is 30 multiply by 2 is 60 degree and this one is 30. So here angle C is 30 degree. This is 90 degree. So let's find out angle D C E. Angle D C E is equal to 180 minus angle E C A plus angle A C B. So we have to subtract the sum of 90 and 30 from 180 to find out the angle. So here 180 minus 90 plus 30 degree. Here we get 180 minus 120 degree equal to 60 degree. So here angle DCE DCE is equal to 60 degree. Option C is the correct answer. Now the next question is question number 41. Which of the following statements is are true or false? We have to find out which statement is true and which statement is false out of these three statements. So first statement is negative 5 is less than 0. Yes, this statement is true because, because all negative numbers are less than 0. So here first statement is true. Now the next statement is negative 3 lies between negative 4 and 4. 
Yes, this statement is also true because on a number line, we can see that here it is 0, negative is on the left hand side, negative 1, 2, 3, negative 4 and positive numbers are on right side. Here negative 3 lies between negative 4 and positive 4. So second statement is true. Now the third statement, multiplicative inverse of negative 1 is a positive number. No, this statement is false because multiplicative inverse of negative 1 is negative 1 only. So here sequence is true, true and false. So here option B is the correct answer. Next is question number 42. Which of the following statements are true or false? Here first statement is fractions which look different but have the same values are called equivalent fractions. Yes, all the fractions which look different but have the same value. It means 2 upon 4 and 4 upon 8. They look different but they have the same values. 1 by 2. 1 by 2. So, first statement is true. Second is fractions that have 1 as its numerator is called unit fraction. Yes, all the fractions which has 1 as a numerator means 1 upon 6, 1 upon 5. These are known as unit fraction. So, this statement is also true. The next one is fractions that have equal denominator are called a fraction. So, fractions that have equal denominator. For example, 7 upon 8, 3 upon 8, 5 upon 8. So, these fractions with the same denominator are known as like fractions. So, this statement is also true. So, option B is the correct answer. Now, the next question is question number 43. First statement is, the mean of the first 5 multiple of 2 is 6. So, here we have to find out the mean of the first 5 multiple of 2. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, here these are the 5 multiples. So, mean is equal to sum of all observations upon total number of observations. So, here the answer is 36. So, first statement is true. The next is mode of the data set 4, 8, 4, 11, 4, 12, 8 is 4. So, here the mode is 4 as the number of frequency of 4 is more. So, here second statement is also true. Now, the third statement. If there are 19 values in a data set arranged in then the median is fifth term. Now, the number of observations are odd. So, we will apply the formula n plus 1 upon 2 that is equal to 19 plus 1 upon 2 equal to 20 upon 2. After cancellation, we get 10th term. So, the third statement is false. Now, the sequence will be true, true, false. So, here option D is the correct answer. Now, in the next question, we have to find out the value of x. Now, let's find out the value of x in the p part. Minus 2 is equal to 46. So, 3x is equal to 46 plus 2. 48 divided by 3. So, answer is 16. Next, we have 20x upon 3 equal to 40. So, after transposition of 3, we get 40 multiplied by 3. Now, the value of x is? Value of x is 6. Now, the third one. 2x is equal to 37 upon 2 minus 5 upon 2. So, here we have 
टू एक्स इक्वल टू थर्टी टू अपॉन टू सिक्सटीन सो है वैल्यू ऑफ दिस एट नाउ द सीक्वेंस इज थ्री टू वन सो है थ्री टू वन इज ऑप्शन ए है ऑप्शन ए इज द करेक्ट आंसर Now the next question is question number forty-five. In this question, we have to match the column. So here, a divided by minus one gives minus a. So minus a is the answer. Minus a divided by minus a is one. Now a divided by one is a. So here the sequence is three, two, one. Option B is the correct answer. Now. The next match the column is in question number forty six. So here parallel lines are given to us, and here vertically opposite angle of angle G is. We have to find out vertically opposite angle of angle G. So here vertically opposite angle is angle E. Next is adjacent angle of angle G. Here angle G is here. So adjacent angle of angle G is angle H. We can say angle F also, but here in this option we are having angle H. So we will going to match with angle H. Now corresponding angle of angle C. Corresponding of angle C is angle G. So here. The sequence will be three, two, one. So option C is the correct answer. Now the next question, question number forty-seven. Integers can be represented on the number line. On a number line, the positive numbers are to the right of zero and the negative numbers are to the left of zero. So let's look into the representation of integers on a number line in the. So here this diagram and uh, here. Two integers are written on the positive side and in the negative side. Rest are the variables. Now here we have to find out the integers which are placed under A, B, C, D in these points. So let's first write down the integers: two, a zero, minus two, minus four, minus six, minus eight, minus ten. Minus twelve, minus fourteen, minus sixteen, and this is minus eighteen. So, using this information, we have to find out point which represent negative four multiplied by three. Negative four multiplied by three is minus twelve. So here we have to find out a point. On which minus twelve is placed. So here negative twelve is placed on D point. So here option D is the correct answer. Now the next question is question number forty-eight. Now we have to use the previous information only, and uh, we have to find out the value of e multiplied by two plus h. So here the value of e is minus ten. Minus ten multiplied by two plus the value of h is minus four. So here we have negative twenty plus minus four. So minus twenty minus four is equal to minus twenty four. So here option C is the correct answer. Now the next question is based on the paragraph, and the paragraph is. The given bar graph shows the number of students in thousand who opted for three different specializations. So here, three different specializations are given in the bar graph during the given five years in a university. So here, two thousand five, two thousand six, two thousand seven, two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Number of years are five. Study the graph carefully and answer the following question. So here we have to answer the following question according to this given information. So here forty nine question is out of the total number of students. So first we have to find out the total number of students. 
who opted for the given three subjects in the year 2009. So, we have to use the data of 2009 here. So, here in 2009, we have 38% of girls. How many boys opted for the given three subjects in the same year? So, we have to find out the total number of boys who opted these three subjects in year 2009. So, let's calculate the total number of students in 2009. This is 20, 20 and this 5. So, total students in 2009 are 20,000 plus 20,000 plus 5,000. It means 45,000. So, total number of students in year 2009 is 45,000. Now, we have to find out the total number of boys who opted these three subjects. So, here 38 percent were girls. So, after subtraction of 38 percent from 100, we get 62 percent of boys. So, we subtract 100 minus 38, we get 62. So, here 62 percent are boys multiply by total number of students in year 2009. So, here after cancellation, we get 27,900. So, total number of boys was 27,900. Here, option C is the correct answer. Now, the next question is question number 50. This question is based on the paragraph. Only. Now, we have to observe the bar graph and collect the information what is required in this question. So, here what is the average number of students who opted for mathematics in all the given years together. So, here we have to find out the average. Now, the subject is mathematics. Let us count the total number of students who opted mathematics in this 5 years. 15, 35, here it is also 35, 30, this is 5. 15 plus 35 plus 35 plus 30 plus 5 this 120 in 1000. So, here yeah, the total number of students is two zero. 1,20,000 divided by 5 because we are going to find out the average and the formula for average is sum of observation upon total number of observations. So, sum of observation is 1,20,000 and total number of observations are 5. After doing the lowest form, we get 24,000. So, the average number of a student who opted for mathematics in all the given years together is 24,000. So, here option A is the correct answer. So, I hope you all understood all these questions. Thank you. Hello student, welcome to Matrix YouTube channel. We are here to discuss the solution of Matrix Olympiad paper of class 7th reasoning conducted on 22 October 2023. Hope you performed very well. So, let's get started. So, question number 51 and 52. Choose the correct alternative that, with, uh, that will continue the same pattern and replace the question mark in the given series. So, series is 25, 49, 121, 169 and find the next term. So, first find the pattern of the question. So, what is the pattern of the question? So, 25 it means 5 square. 5 square, 49 it means 7 square, 121 it means 11 square, 169 it means 13 square. 
सो फाइव स्क्वायर सेमी सेवन स्क्वायर इलेवन स्क्वायर फोर थर्टीन स्क्वायर सो कंसर्किटिव दिस इज द कंसर्किटिव प्राइम नंबर स्क्वायर सो इट मीन्स नेक्स्ट प्राइम नंबर इज सेवनटीन सो सेवनटीन स्क्वायर इट मीन्स टू एटी नाइन सो नेक्स्ट टर्म इज टू एटी नाइन इट मीन्स ऑप्शन ए इज द करेक्ट आंसर ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन सो लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन सो नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टी टू फाइंड द नेक्स्ट टर्म ऑफ दिस सीरीज सो अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस सीरीज इन द सेकेंड इन द सेकेंड टर्म रिमूव फर्स्ट एल्फाबेट वॉज रिमूव फर्स्ट एल्फाबेट वॉज रिमूव इन द नेक्स्ट टर्म नाउ लास्ट एल्फाबेट वॉज रिमूव फॉर द नेक्स्ट टर्म नाउ अगेन नाउ अगेन फर्स्ट एल्फाबेट वॉज रिमूव फॉर फाइंडिंग द नेक्स्ट टर्म सिमिलरली सिमिलरली नाउ लास्ट एल्फाबेट वॉज रिमूव for finding the next term it means next term is e s t i because remove the last alphabet so it means e s t i it means option c is the correct answer of this question so let's move on to the next question so next question is question number 53 find the mirror image of the given figure find the mirror image of the given figure ab represents mirror so find the mirror image of x so this part is near the mirror then in the mirror image also this part will be near the mirror and this part is away from the mirror this part is away from the mirror so it will remains away from the mirror in the mirror image and direction of this arrow is away from the mirror so in the mirror image it will remains away from the mirror and direction of this arrow is towards mirror so it will remains towards the mirror in the mirror image so it means option a is the correct mirror image of given figure x so option a is the correct answer of this question so let's move on to the next question so next question is question number 54 the age of five sisters sita geeta babita lalita and anita are compared Geeta is older than Babita but younger than Sita. Lalita is uh, eldest and Babita is not the youngest. Who is the second eldest sister? So according to question, Geeta is older than Babita. Geeta is older than Babita but younger than Sita. Geeta is younger than younger than to sita lalita is eldest so lalita is the eldest but and babita is not the youngest here babita is not the youngest so it means anita is the youngest sister so who is the second eldest sister so sita is the second eldest sister so it means option c here option c is the correct answer of this question so let's move on to the next question question number so question number 55 the sequence of folding a piece of paper and the manner in which the folded paper has been cut in shown in the following questions figure how would this paper look in the respective option when folded so find the unfold when unfold find the unfold figure of paper so find the image of x because x represents unfold paper according to this question we folded the x then we get y now we folded y we folded y then we get x so 
नाउ अनफोल्ड दी पेपर सो अनफोल्ड दी पेपर इन दी सेम सिक्वेंस इन विच इट वॉज फोल्डेड एंड फाइंड दी मिरर इमेज इन ईच केस सो फर्स्ट वी विल अनफोल्ड दी जेड देन वी गेट देन वी गेट वाई नाउ वी विल अनफोल्ड दी वाई देन वी विल गेट एक्स एंड फाइंड दी इमेज ऑफ एक्स बिकॉज एक्स रिप्रेजेंट अनफोल्ड पेपर वेन अनफोल्ड दी जेड वेन अनफोल्ड दी जेड वेन अनफोल्ड दी जेड इट्स लुक लाइज एज फॉलोज ओके वेन अनफोल्ड दी जेड इट्स रिप्रेजेंट वाई नाउ अनफोल्ड दी वाई इट्स रिप्रेजेंट इट्स रिप्रेजेंट एक्स इट्स रिप्रेजेंट सो फाइंड द मिरर इमेज ऑफ एक्स इज लोकलाइज एज फॉलोज सो दिस इज द figure of unfolded paper so it's represent x so here correct answer is option c so option c is the unfolded paper let's move on to the next question number 56 question number 56 the sequence of folding a piece of paper and the manner in which the folded paper has been cut in shown in the following question figure how would this paper look in the respective option when unfold so find the unfold figure of paper fold we fold this paper we fold this paper then we get this paper now fold now we folded this paper then we get this paper let's suppose this is the x y and z unfold the paper in the same sequence in which it was folded and find the mirror image in each case so first we will unfold the z then we get y then we get y now we will unfold the y then we get the x and find the image of x because x represents unfold paper so unfold the first when unfold the z its look lies as follows when unfold the x so z it's represent y it's represent y now unfold the y it's represent x and find the image of x because x represents unfold paper so so um, find the mirror image of the y so mirror image of y look lies as follows it's represent x it's represent x and x represents unfold paper so this is the figure of unfold paper so here option c is the correct answer of this question so next question is question number 57 if a denotes plus b denotes multiply c denotes minus d denotes divide then what will be the value of the following expression so find the value of given expression so expression is 50 a 86 c 40 d 10 b 5 so a means 50 a a means plus 
now write plus 86 c so what is the meaning of c c means minus so 86 minus 40 d so meaning of d is divide 10 b b means multiply multiply by 5 now using board mass rule in this expression so first divide the numbers so 50 plus 86 minus 40 divided by 10 it means 4 multiply by 5 now again according to board mass rule multiply the numbers so 50 plus 86 minus 4 multiply by 5 it means 20 adding this number 50 plus 86 it means 136 minus 20 136 minus 20 it means 116 so 116 is the value of the given expression it means option c is the correct answer of this question so let's move on to the next question so next question is question number 58 which two numbers should be interchanged to make the given equation correct so equation is 72 plus 63 divided by 9 multiplied by 5 minus 36 is equals to 67. In this type question, put the option 1 by 1, 1 and let's see which one will follow correctly. So, first taking option A. So, according to option A, interchange the 63 and 36. So, 72 plus 63. 63 means 36 divided by 9 multiply by 5 minus 36. 36 means 63 is equals to 67. So, 72, 72 plus using board mass rule divide the numbers first divide the numbers. So, 36 divided by 9. 36 divided by 9 it means 4 multiply by 5 minus 63 is equals to 67. 72 plus 4 uh, multiply by 5 it means 20 minus 63 is equals to 67. 72 plus 20 it means 92 minus 63 is equals to 67. 92 minus 63 it means 29. 29 never equals to 67. It means option A is the incorrect option. Now taking option B. So according to option B, interchange the 63 and 72 numbers. So 72 plus 63 divided by 9 multiply by 5 minus 36 is equals to 67. So, according to option B, interchange the 72 and 63. So, 72 it means 63 plus 62, 63 it means 72 divided by 9 multiplied by 5 minus 36 is equals to 67. So, using board mass rule, so 63 plus 72 first divide the numbers. 72 divided by 9, it means 8. Multiply by 5 minus 36 is equals to 67. So, 63 plus, now multiply the numbers, 8 into 5, it means 40. 40 minus 36 is equals to 67. So, 6, 63 plus 40, it means 103 minus 36 is equals to 67. 103 minus 36, it means, it means 67. So, 67 is equals to 67. Yes, it means option B is the correct answer of this question. So, interchange the 63 and 72. Then we get the correct answer in given expression. Now, let's move on to the next question. So, next question is question number 59. Rohan is facing west. He turns 45 degree clockwise. Again, 
180 डिग्री एंटी क्लॉक वाइज एंड देन टर्न टू टू फाइव डिग्री एंटी क्लॉक वाइज इन विच डायरेक्शन इज ही फेसिंग नाउ सो बिफोर स्टार्टिंग दिस क्वेश्चन वी शुड नो दैट देर आर फोर टाइप ऑफ मेन डायरेक्शन वन इज ईस्ट नॉर्थ साउथ एंड वेस्ट एंड देर आर फोर कार्डिनल डायरेक्शन नॉर्थ ईस्ट साउथ ईस्ट साउथ वेस्ट एंड दिस इज नॉर्थ वेस्ट सो अकॉर्डिंग टू क्वेश्चन रोहन इज फेसिंग वेस्ट स्टार्टिंग फेसिंग ऑफ रोहन इज इन इन द वेस्ट डायरेक्शन he turns 45 degree clockwise so first count the total clockwise turn and then count total anti clockwise turn so here total clockwise turn is 45 degree okay now counting टोटल एंटी क्लॉकवाइज सो टोटल एंटी क्लॉकवाइज इट मींस 180 एटी प्लस टू टू फाइव सो एडिंग वन एटी प्लस टू टू फाइव डिग्री इट मींस 405 डिग्री नाउ कंपेयर इन इन बिटवीन क्लॉकवाइज एंड एंटी क्लॉकवाइज देन वी गेट दी 405 डिग्री माइनस 45 degree it means 360 degree anti clockwise turn okay then we get the 360 degree anti clockwise turn now facing in the west starting facing in the west now finally he turns 360 degree in the anti clockwise direction in the anti clockwise direction it means 360 degree anti clockwise direction so now final facing of rohan is also in the west direction so here is correct answer is option a because he rotated 360 finally he rotated 360 degree anti clockwise so starting facing in the west direction then he turns 360 degree anti clockwise direction so it will remains west direction so it means final facing of rohan is also west direction so here option a is the correct answer of this question so question number 60 so question number 60 mayank start walking in north direction and walks 18 km then he turns right and walks 28 km then he turns right and walks 35 km then he turns left and walks 12 km he then turns left and walks 17 km in which direction and how many distance is he from the original position so according to this question let's suppose a is the starting point of mayank so according to question mayank started start walking in north direction he goes to the north and walk 18 km first he goes to the north 18 km then he turns right then he turns his right and walks 28 km and walks 28 km then he turns right and walks 35 km again he turns his right and walks 35 km 35 km then he turns left and walk 12 km now he turns his left and walk 12 km he turns he then turns left and walk 17 km he turns his left and walk 17 km so let's suppose this is the final position of mayank 
डी इज दी फाइनल पोजिशन ऑफ मयंक सो इन विच डायरेक्शन सो इन विच डायरेक्शन एंड हाउ मेनी डिस्टेंस फाइंड द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन ए एंड बी फाइंड द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन इनिशियल पॉइंट टू एंड पॉइंट ओके सो अकॉर्डिंग टू क्वेश्चन सो वैल्यू ऑफ दिस लाइन इज एटीन एंड वैल्यू ऑफ दिस लाइन इज सेवनटीन सो एटीन प्लस सेवनटीन इट मीन्स थर्टी फाइव एंड वैल्यू ऑफ दिस लाइन इज ऑल्सो थर्टी फाइव इज ऑल्सो थर्टी फाइव सो इट मीन्स ए एंड बी विल बी इन सेम लाइन ए एंड बी विल बी इन सेम लाइन so find the distance between a and b so find the distance between a and b so what is the value of ab so it means value of this line is 28 also 28 means means 28 km also so 28 value of this line it means value of this line is equals to this line so it means 12 km so plus 12 km so distance between a and b is 40 km is 40 km and find the direction of b with respect to a so direction of b with respect to a is in east direction is in east direction so direction of end point with respect to initial point is in east so 40 km east so it means here option d is the correct answer of this question okay thank you everyone